Hi, Gorge Poetry Show. Um, a little dark. Maybe I'll talk to the cameraman. Yeah, I caught him. Caught them napping over there. You know what they're like. You know, uh, union scales are. You know, I'm sitting here drinking a coffee. Um, I think we're doing a mixture of Canadian American poets this time. Um, there's, I've got way too many. They're all good, and uh, young poets, older poets, poets have been around so long. They're, um, they've been grandfathered into eternity, um, and uh, it's all, you know, good, vital, um, beautifully crafted. What else can I say? Um, Toronto poet, editor, and artist, oh, and novelist too, Susan Glickman, has a lovely poem in uh, the October issue of Walrus Magazine. It's called Laurentian Suite. The landscape of my childhood was obstinate. Slabs of rock and stunted pines, lakes spiked with white caps. But it had a singular music. White-throated sparrows in the morning, loons across the water at night, the buzz of hummingbirds, twang of frogs, plucking the stalks of water hyacinth. Devil's paintbrush, cornflowers, Queen Anne's lace, vetch and buttercups sparkled in the long, wet grass. We wove them into garlands at temple and neck, carried home bouquets that always died en route. We wanted to bring everything home, raspberries sweet as maple sugar from Madame Piot's store where we walked after supper to pick up the mail. Madame Piot, whose varnished ziggurat of hair we believed housed poisonous spiders. Snails striped like beach umbrellas impossibly small toads whose journeys between our feet made us colossi, sunnies and perch, bony fish we didn't like eating but insisted our mother cook because we had caught them ourselves and otherwise their sacrifice was meaningless. City kids these summers reminded us that we were animals with animal appetites, curious and cruel made of bone and muscle and nerve. The way the land was made of rock and trees and water. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Susan's uh, published many books of poetry over the years, none of which I happen to own at the moment, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, as we more or less get to everything on the poetry show. Um, Mary Oliver, American poet, uh, probably doesn't want to be called senior or uh, grandmotherly or any of those things, but she's been around for a long time, published a lot of books since the 70s. This is The Selected Poems, and it's called Devotions, which uh, received a rather mm, kind of mm, review in The New Yorker. I believe some of the more sophisticates amongst us in North America think her poetry is too simple and and too sort of based in faith and, you know, all those disreputable things that intellectuals can't stand. Anyway, um, I rather like her myself. And, um, you know, being the uh, perpetual iconoclast, I, I like people that other poets don't like. Anyway, um, see if I can get a picture of Mary here. There she is. Good old Mary Oliver. Hang in there, babe. She's doing really well. I don't want to be demure or respectable. I don't want to be demure or respectable. I was that way, asleep for many years. That way you forget too many important things. How the little stones, even if you can't hear them, are singing. How the river can't wait to get to the ocean and the sky. It's been there before. What traveling is that? It is a joy to imagine such distances. I could skip sleep for the next hundred years. 
There is a fire in the lashes of my eyes. It doesn't matter where I am. It could be a small room. The glimmer of gold Boehm, that's Jacob Boehm, the mystic of hundreds of years ago. The glimmer of gold Boehm saw on the kitchen pot was missed by everyone else in the house. Maybe the fire in my lashes is a reflection of that. Why do I have so many thoughts? They are driving me crazy. Why am I always going anywhere instead of somewhere? Listen to me or not, it hardly matters. I'm not trying to be wise, that would be foolish. I'm just chattering. Um, remember that Dylan line? Got a head full of ideas that are driving me insane. I wonder if Mary was thinking of that. That's from, oh, which one is it? That's from the book called Felicity 2015. Oh, the poetry teacher from another book. You know, this has this is a book that has many books in it. It's kind of like a little mini portable library. The poetry teacher. The university gave me a new elegant classroom to teach in. Only one thing, they said. You can't bring your dog. It's my it's in my contract, I said. I had made sure of that. We bargained and I moved to an old classroom in an old building propped the door open, kept a bowl of water in the room. I could hear Ben, among other voices, barking, howling in the distance. Then they would all arrive, Ben, his pals, maybe an unknown dog or two, all of them thirsty and happy. They drank, flung themselves down among the students. The students loved it. They all wrote thirsty, happy poems. Imagine uh, Jim Smith's rather fond of that one, eh, Jim? Hmm... If the first time Percy came back. The first time Percy came back, he was not sailing on a cloud. He was loping along the sand as though he had come a great way. Percy, I cried out and reached to him, those white curls, but he was unreachable. As music is present, yet you can't touch it. Yes, it's all different, he said. You're going to be very surprised. But I wasn't thinking of that. I only wanted to hold him. Listen, he said, I miss that too. And now you'll be telling stories of my coming back. And they won't be false and they won't be true, but they'll be real. And then, as he used to, he said, let's go. And we walked down the beach together. Ghost of a dog? Zach Wells, think about your dog. It's probably a ghost. I go down to the shore in the morning. And depending on the hour, the waves are rolling in or moving out. And I say, oh, I am miserable. What shall, what should I do? And the sea says in its lovely voice, excuse me, I have work to do. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, with thanks to the field sparrow, whose voice is so delicate and humble. I do not live happily or comfortably with the cleverness of our times. The talk is all about computers. The news is all about bombs and blood. This morning in the fresh field, I came upon a hidden meat. No, I came upon a hidden nest. It held four warm speckled eggs. I touched them. Then I went away softly, having felt something more wonderful than all the electricity in New York City. Well, I think we can see where Mary's coming from, can't we? More power to you, dear. Always liked your poetry. We've read from um, the Best American Poetry series a number of times. This is the latest, 2017. Edited by, uh, well, no, uh, series editor David LeMond, Natasha Trithui, guest editor. And as always, there's a number of fine poems in here. And um, which one am I going to read? Which of the many am I going to read? Oh, that's right. Um, some, for some reason or other, Leonard Cohen's in here. You'll all remember who he is. Um, famous uh, Canadian uh, songwriter, singer, novelist, and poet. Anyway, this was published in The New Yorker, which I guess gives it... Uh, permission to be in this. And I don't think it's in a book as yet. It's called Steer Your Way. 
Steer your way through the ruins of the altar and the mall. Steer your way through the fables of creation and the fall. Steer your way past the palaces that rise above the rot, year by year, month by month, day by day, thought by thought. Steer your heart past the truth you believed in yesterday, such as fundamental goodness and the wisdom of the way. Steer your heart, precious heart, past the woman whom you bought year by year, month by month, day by day, thought by thought. Steer your path through the pain that is far more real than you that has smashed the cosmic model, that has blinded every view. And please don't make me go there, though there be a God or not, year by year, month by month, day by day, thought by thought. They whisper still, the injured stones, the blunted mountains weep as he died to make men holy, let us die to make things cheap. And say the mea culpa, which you've gradually forgot, year by year, month by month, day by day, thought by thought. Steer your way, O oh my heart, though I have no right to ask, to the one who was never equal to the task, who knows he's been convicted, who knows he will be shot. Year by year, month by month, day by day, thought by thought. Yes, quite a number of poets in here that I've never heard of before, but you know, that's nothing new. You could fill in an encyclopedia with the poets I don't, haven't heard of. And how about yourself? Rowan Ricardo Phillips. This was published in the American Scholar. Halo. We wander round ring after ring of life, one after another blossoms of light, to which we are but a mere flotsam of bees. And although this isn't true, the poem says this is true. Life, light, flowers, and bee. Truths. So stop and hold this poem above your head. Hold it up to whatever light you find. Then let it go. Forget it if you can. If it is meant to remain, it will remain. And if it is meant to light, it will light. Your hands will have moved on to something else, but your head will have, say it, it's halo. Sherrod Santos, poem first published in the Harvard Review. I went for a walk in winter. So a little evocation of Robert Frost there. Don't know if it's intentional, but I guess we're all going to think of it, right? Walking by the woods in winter. I went for a walk in winter. The snow didn't fall so much as blow past horizontally. People heading east leaned into it. People heading west leaned back. Then one after another, they disappeared as in the fade out of a movie screen, as if the world were reduced to the simplest natural law, that of erasure. A hotel doorman struggled to clear a sidewalk path that quickly filled in behind him. Soon too, the hollow left behind on a bus stop bench above the entry to a corridor, a blue and yellow neon sign lit my side of the street. I felt my body pass through it, I felt the colours pass through me, as though a mood had suddenly come and gone, leaving only a tremor behind. After I returned to my apartment, I found it difficult to focus on anything, and when I switched on the television, it took me a moment to realise that a movie in a foreign language was on, though what language that was, I couldn't say. The uniforms of the soldiers locked in battle were likewise unfamiliar, and the frozen landscape provided no clue. Muskets were fired, swords were drawn, orders were shouted, and, I assumed, carried out. For bodies continued to drop in numbers, carnage alone explained. Somewhere off screen, wagons were ready to be readied to haul away the dead. And this too I took in, less to imagine, 
the event and foresee the end. The battlefield cleared, the blood covered over by ever amassing drifts of snow. Charles Simich, or is it Simic? I never know. Anyway, a lot of people seem to like him. I do too. You see many references on Facebook of other poets going, oh, I really like Charles. And uh, this one's from the Three Penny Review. Sounds uh, charmingly uh, dated. You know, what could you get for three pennies? Well, maybe something a hundred years ago. Um, seeing things. I came here in my youth. A wind toy on a string. Saw a street in hell and one in paradise. Saw a room with a light in it so ailing it could have been leaning on a cane. Saw a man in a tailor shop kneel before a bride with pins between his lips. Saw the president swear on the Bible while snow fell around him. Saw a pair of lovers kiss in an empty church. And a naked man run out of a building, waving a gun and sobbing. Saw kids wearing Halloween masks jump from one roof to another at sunset. Saw a van full of stray dogs look back at me. Saw a homeless woman berating God and a blind man with a guitar singing, O oh Lord, remember me when these chains are broken, set my body free. Well, set my body free indeed. Maggie Smith, poem first published in a magazine called Waxwing, Good Bones. Life is short, though I keep this from my children. Life is short, and I've shortened mine in a thousand delicious, ill-advised ways. A thousand deliciously ill-advised ways I'll keep from my children. The world is at least 50% terrible, and that's a conservative estimate. Though I keep this from my children. For every bird there is a stone thrown at a bird. For every loved child, a child broken, bagged, sunk in a lake. Life is short and the world is at least half terrible. And for every kind stranger, there is one who would break you. Though I keep this from my children. I am trying to sell them the world. Any decent realtor walking you through a real shit hole chirps on about good bones. This place could be beautiful, right? You could make this place beautiful. Hmm. The Best American Poetry 2017. We'll get back to that. Um, a few newish books, uh, Canadian ones. I think they're all Canadian, yeah. Um, I think they're all Canadian poets too, and uh, no apologies there. But um, let me sort of try and get sorted out here. I'm kind of standing up and making things even more complicated for myself than they usually are. Um, yeah. Stuart Ross, a sparrow came down resplendent. And if that's not a resplendent cover, I don't know what is. Ah, look what I opened to. A sparrow came down resplendent. From a bunch of clouds, a string trailing from its beak, and a fireman below watched this, though he couldn't see the string from where he was. The sparrow came right toward him, where he stood in front of the fire station. The fireman stood his ground as the sparrow opened his beak and a piece of string, just a tiny piece of white string, came drifting down. The fireman opened his mouth and the string sailed in it went. Down his throat and into his gullet as the sparrow winged back into the sky resplendent. In the days that followed, the fireman didn't notice anything. Much different, except that now he was a fireman with a piece of string inside him. And the sparrow had said unto him, he remembered the sparrow saying, They abide and they endure, carry a piece of their nest within you. 
don't th fuck things up like you usually do, like how you wrecked your family. And the fireman held out his palm, and the sun shone upon it, and many baby birds did there appear. That was called doxology. And um, I wouldn't blame you if you rushed off to the dictionary to, to check the meaning of that, because I had to do it myself. August 2008, the poem on the opposing page. And it's dedicated to Laurie. I arrived with a jar of pickles. The town was small. We sat on your porch. We saw a man pursuing the horizon. The water in her glasses was crystal. You read me a poem by Stephen Crane. I read you a poem by Stephen Crane and I said, is it good, friend? Now this is the strange part. You leaned toward me and the sky turned red. What then? <laughs> oh, I like this one. Facts. A sunny early evening in Toronto. I'm driving right by Dave and Merlin's place on College Street when the door swings open and they both step out. I wave through my open window and their faces brighten when they see me. But I have veered into oncoming traffic and a streetcar nearby nearly hits my Honda Civic. Cars honk, I swerve. I think of how stupid Dave and Merlin must think I am back there on the sidewalk. Then I'm awake. Of course, it was a dream. Dave and Merlin don't live on college. My Honda was stolen years ago and I'm already dead. Oh, this is interesting. There's one here actually called Stuart Ross. <laughs> interesting innovation. Um, it's uh, probably written after reading another piece by Lisa Jarnot or Jarnot. Not sure. When you do grow up, you will know the names of your ancestors. Lentils will sing you songs of praise from the steaming bowl before you. You will sleep eight full hours a night and your teeth will brush themselves and floss. Your nostril hairs will clip themselves. You will be king of the monkey bars. Your poems will be read by apes. Clouds will assume your shape so the rain will fall only on you. A monster will reach a claw from under your bed and no one will ever hear from you again. That sounds scary. Poem. It was night and we all took poison pills. The world was going to end. It hit me. If I could just stay awake, I'd live and see the whole apocalypse. I did. In the streets, rough boys threw furniture at me. Ooh. Nifty stuff there. Mr. Ross, we'll get back to that one. Um, Richard Huttle, that said, uh, that said, poems. But, you know, everything's a poem here. Lots of good ones in this. I've been uh, reading it the last few days, and uh, this will only be, you know, the first of several uh, dippings into. I'm trying to find the one I thought was really cool. Well, of course, there's more than uh, one that's really cool. The fifth alarm. Because tiger lilies quiver and quake in the wake of quickly passing autos, I began shaking uncontrollably. We were talking about reasons that the reason does not know when in the next room a baby started singing, ba ba. Where the road meets the sky, there is no time to hurry and every place else scares the hell out of me, especially clouds. Like, okay, maybe you can give love away. Maybe you can, like so many cherry blossoms in spring 
on South Halsted, across from parking lots. Picture window for Jay Miller, or is that Jay Millar? One of these days Jay's going to tell me. Um, he almost uh, ran out of memory before I could interview him on the last, uh, last uh, poetry show. And uh, I apologized to him and he said, that's okay, Gord. I thought it was very generous of him. Although he maybe, uh, uh, he thought I'd throw him a curveball. Anyway, picture window for Jay Millar. Sometimes in the middle of winter, I sit where shaft of sunlight falls upon the couch, sometimes even the floor like a damned old dog, and look through my picture window at an upward angle. It might as well be dream of arboretum, bare brittle honey locust branches, delicate as fine lace lattice, fierce and fragile as web. Sometimes at night incoming airplane lights stretch outward across the horizon for miles streaming toward me, over me, in slow, embery pulses. Dazzling as transcontinental ferris wheel, like so many yellow jackets returning to nest at dusk. Sometimes Jerry Garcia doing Dear Mr. Fantasy. Sometimes, sometimes even other people's poems. Sometimes Monk playing Nice Work If You Can Get It, throwing in a full measure of Harrigan, That's Me, because it's fun, because it's funny, because it's there. Sometimes rolling around earth inside medicine wheel atop bald mountain ridgeline on the heavenly side of Chinaman's hat. Waves of grasshoppers at noon. Well, dear Mr. Fantasy, that was on Traffic's first album. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure you all know that. Many, um, music references in these poems by Richard Huddle and um, I'm certainly very comfortable with that. Um, Brick Books put out these nice little, um, I don't know what you'd call them, mini broadsides um, of uh, their poets and or some of the recent poets. Uh, this one is Auguries by Clea Roberts, the poem from Spring Planting. Grief is a slow river, never freezing to the bottom. Grief is a burled log, cut to length, polished and bright. It can hold up your porch roof for years. Greet everyone who comes to the door. Grief is spooked horses in a storm, and you can't find your coat. Sue Sinclair, Heaven's Thieves. The poem, Crosshairs. Dandelion seed drifts over the highway spins in the airstreams of cars. Overhead, an airplane crosses the sky deliberately, like a hand on a chalkboard crossing the letter T. The seeds cut across the traffic's path, as though drafting the arm of another axis to balance it, curbing its speed. The cars purr as the seeds swirl past. But look, the plane has overshot the letter's end. At any moment, I think, a tiny figure will come parachuting down. It's like playing cards looking at these. Susan Emsley, Museum of Kindness. Idle. Fat flies play the didgeridoo at the kitchen windowsill. Sprinkler throws its drink in Lon's face for the 90th take. To each his own, says the squirrel. 
the sun has managed to dodge the clouds for the better part of the day. Two boys on the sidewalk practice whistling with the reeds of their fingers. One's an expert, the other hasn't quite caught on. Ring around the collar under fine down on their tanned necks. Dirty fingernails are memento mori, if anyone cares to look. I'd rather drag the hose a foot or two closer, hearkening to the rough green notes. Spring. One boy has eyelashes like a daisy folded in half. The other freckles in his ears. Other Houses by Kate Cayley. Nice little image there. I like that. This poem's called, <laughs> ironically for your, yours truly, Questions for the Dead. That's something I do a fair bit, as you, some of you will know. Did you know? Did you know you knew? Were you alone or greeted or alone and then greeted at the moment when you were most alone? Was it light or dark? Did you, for a second, become everything, even as or just before you became nothing? Did you become nothing? What kind of light was it? What kind of darkness? Did light and dark have a taste and texture like food? Did the sky open or close? What was the first thing that happened after you were no longer afraid? Well, thank you, Kate Cayley and the other poets. That was, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be looking for this one again, as you can well imagine. And next time we'll get to uh, an earlier book by Sue Goyette, who uh, we read from ooh, several shows ago, uh, Marvelous Poets from the East Coast, or, you know, the, le which are, you know, the right coast, yeah, that one, <laughs> the one where they're always right. Anyway, um, another poetry show bites the dust rather um, amusedly and gratefully. And uh, one is always uh, happy to participate, uh, that one being me. And um, uh, love to all you poetry lovers. Let us continue to share the language of eternity, at least the English version. Because let's face it, it's more beautiful than anything else on offer. It is. I've maintained this all along. There is nothing as beautiful as poetry. Nothing. Bye-bye. <laughs>